President Cyril Ramaphosa's announcement of a relaxation of lockdown restrictions has come a little too late. That's according to the South African Farmers Initiative. Now, different spheres of that sector say the national lockdown caused too many disruptions to even count right now. Now, following last night's announcement by the president, we get some reaction from the South African Farmers Initiative chairman of that board, Theo de Yaga, who joins us via Skype from Pretoria. Theo, thank you so much for joining us. If I could get some um, uh, paperwork out of the way first, um, uh, your uh, organization was in the news some Ten days ago, you decided to go to court specifically on behalf of your members who are in the uh, wine industry, um, those families um, representing wine farmers and the people who work for them deciding to go to court. Um, and it was set to be heard in Pretoria later this month um, and asking a court application against the ban on the sale of wine. Following the pre president's announcement last night on the lifting of the ban, uh, does that also mean that your court action falls by the wayside or do you feel that you still need to prove a point no thank you so much for inviting us um, we, we must continue with that case we will just uh, remove it from the urgent role um, to n the normal role because it's about a principle and and we must ensure that these bans are not just reinstituted if we have a few more COVID cases following the greater freedom of movement in, in South Africa. And from what we have learned um, the week before last week in our court case with British American Tobacco, where we represented the tobacco farmers and their workers, um, it seems on the minister's own calculations and her own numbers that she might have saved 16 to 18 beds by banning tobacco over the last 20 weeks. You see, extremely important for us to get a principle pinned down by the courts. The principle is one thing. Is there any legal talk of seeking damages by those in your industry? We have not yet consulted with all those members. We are still really fighting the wool from the door mm -hmm. in terms of the number of job losses, the number of bankruptcies. Mm -hmm. the, it, it, it's like a battlefield out there also on the wildlife ranching farms. Now, you talk about beating the wolf from the door. Um, there'd be some um, size of relief watching the president's uh, speech last night with the lifting of the alcohol ban, the lifting of the tobacco ban, restaurants being able to operate a little bit more normally, but not at full capacity. But we're not done seeing the repercussions of these last few months of lockdown, are we? What are you hearing from your members? Well, there are so many of them that who are really on the brink of bankruptcy. There are so many of them who had to um, let some of the workers go. Literally hundreds of thousands of workers on farms lost their jobs in, in those industries. So it is now to try to regroup and see how we can save those industries. You know, uh, uh, like a wine farmer or a tobacco farmer who has now lost a part of the market, people are not now going to drink wine to catch up for the last few months or smoke to catch up for the last few weeks. Uh, a very important industry to the economy indeed. What are you hearing in terms of the morale from the farming industry? I mean, this is a, 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 a sector in South Africa that's often brought to its knees by unseen enemies. Like for the last decade, we've had years of droughts in very important catchment um, and uh, areas and so-called nurseries and bread baskets in South Africa's farming industry. And they just some areas just coming out of a drought over the last year or so and then another uh, invisible monster arrives in the form of COVID-19. You know, many people ask, why? Why are people in this industry? We know it's important to keep food on the table, but it takes a special human being to make it their life's work, doesn't it? You know, if COVID ha has taught us nothing else, it taught us that we can live without most of the stuff which we thought we could not live without but we cannot live without food. Mm. It actually um, underlined the role of the farmer, not only in, in our economy, but also in society. People started to ask, where, do, where does our food come from? Uh, how is it produced? The awareness of nutrition along with um, the availability of food and also the health side of it has really spiked, not only in South Africa, across the globe, 
But we are extremely concerned about the morale of farmers in certain areas. Take, for example, the Southern Cape, the, the mecca of the world's ostrich industry. It is even more unique than our wines. It is nearly as old as our wines. Those old um, architectural structures, the, the ostrich palaces, it's something unique to, to, to South Africa. But they are in their fifth year of one of the most terrible droughts mm -hmm. in, 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 in our generation. There is no market for the feathers because there is no real festival or Stockholm water festival. Mm -hmm. There is no market for the leather because that um, is actually thriving under a growing economy and not under a shrinking economy. And the meat mostly goes to restaurants which have been closed. Mm -hmm. so, so we are launching a few special programs, not only to, to, to fight the regulations in court, but to build back better again. Well, we can only wish you everything of the best. Thank you so much. Dr. Theo de Yaga is the chairperson of the board of the SA Farmers Initiative, um, also known as SAI or S-A-A-I.